Hello students, today we will be touching upon a new chapter which is known as food groups. Okay, so as you know that food is very important for the human existence. If you've heard about three main things, which is shelter, clothing and food. These are the three main things that are very important for a human being, especially for us, for homo sapiens and food without food a person cannot survive okay so for existence for nourishment of the body food is extremely important and it provides the nourishment it gives the nutrients for the proper growth and development of the body or you can say proper growth of the body maintenance of the tissues cells and organs of the body repair of the body if there are cells that undergo you know aging and they die so it is important to have a proper nutrition so that these cells are able to repair themselves new cells are uh, are there for their functioning and also for the uh, process of reproduction nourishment is very important not just for humans for animals as well it gives energy it gives proteins it gives carbohydrates it gives a lot of macronutrients and uh, a lot of micronutrients also okay so you can say that it gives the energy required for all human activities there are two kinds of activities one is the voluntary activity okay which a person does by his own like if i'm raising my hand this i'm doing it voluntarily i'm doing it by my will so this is the voluntary activity so the nutrition is required for this raising of my hand nutrition is required the right kind of food is required and also for the involuntary activity so what is involuntary activity the activities which are going out uh, going on inside our body like the energy required for breathing for the lungs to function for the heart to beat for uh, the digestion process which is taking place so those are the involuntary activities so basically it is required for all human activities for repair and also to maintain the tissue integrity so we come about the basic functions of food and what are the basic functions of food first is that the body needs energy to work and regulate all functions that means it needs to work it needs energy to work if you eat food you have the energy to study if you eat food you have the energy to cycle if you eat a proper diet you have the energy to do all the work but if you don't eat proper food if you go on a starvation diet what happens your energy levels go down 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 and down okay so to work to regulate all the bodily functions you need energy and food basically provides energy to, through carbohydrates and fats why not proteins proteins also provide energy but they are the last resort for energy when the carbohydrates and fats have been uh, utilized when they have been already utilized then the body uh, takes energy from the proteins okay then the second point is that body regularly needs material for tissue building growth and repair so energy for tissue building growth and repair is essential and the third point is that food protects our body from different infections now you know there are different kind of infections which are there in the air sometimes you catch a common cold sometimes you catch hay fever you know different types of viruses different types of bacteria are there which are present everywhere in and around us okay so what happens when we eat the right amount of food the right choice of food the right quality of food it protects our body from different infections that is why they say that you should be eating a lot of green vegetables you should be eating a lot of colored fruits so that these colors they have antioxidants they have uh, the 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 colors basically they help in helping the little army inside our body and this army basically forms our defense system this army basically fights with different kinds of infections okay so that was 
another function of food. Now we come to the third or maybe the fourth function of food which is the water and roughage in the food. So water is what? The water that we drink and what is roughage? Roughage is basically the fiber that we have. Like when we eat a whole apple, you eat the peel and the peel is rich in pectin which is a kind of roughage. Similarly, when you eat a chapati, so you eat the bran, the bran, a, a little portion of the bran is also there in the chapati, which provides for the roughage, okay. So basically, roughage is your fiber, okay, that is your fiber in the food, which helps in regulating the normal functioning of the body, like digestion, excretion, body temperature maintenance, and the electrolyte balance. We will all come to this when we study further, okay? Now, one very important characteristic of food is that food satisfies one's emotional needs and gives security. Like when you see an infant, when the time that it is feeding upon its mother, when the time when it is uh, nursing, it is drinking the milk of its mother, the, the infant feels very satisfied and secure, okay? And also emotionally that infant feels secure and also it acts like a stress reliever like sometimes you're in a lot of stress so when you eat something the body gives signals that the the person is eating food so it starts relieving the stress levels of the body okay so that is another function and the last but not the least function is that it also helps to express our hospitality and friendship so somebody comes over to your house you offer them a cup of tea a cup of coffee you give them some homemade biscuits you make some very relishing breakfast for them why because you want them to feel uh, good you want them to feel uh, secure and safe and you want to uh, show that you are friends with them and you also want to develop the social relations think about somebody who's coming to your house and you just say okay what is your um, what do you want to do i don't have time or something like that and you don't even ask them for a glass of water your friends will the next time that they come to your house they will always think twice because they will say i will not go to that person's house she doesn't even offer me water okay so what is it you are expressing your hospitality and friendship when you are offering them good food right so that is one way of developing the social relations once you have your uh, once you have your small home then you like to expand your social relations and how do you expand your social relations by inviting guests or arranging parties when you have when a baby is born or maybe the baby is baptized or whatever you give a, you know the birthday party or something you give out parties why because you want to show your hospitality to people right so these were the functions of the foods next we come to the major foods and their functions and also certain nutrients so when we divide foods into three major types okay so one is the energy yielding function so we are dividing the foods on their functions we are dividing the food groups as per their functions so first comes your energy yielding function that means the foods that give you readily available energy and what are these first is the carbohydrates and fats like i told you before carbohydrate and fats are the major foods that give you instant energy right and what are their sources the cereals and millets are their sources roots and tubers are their sources vegetable oil ghee butter mustard oil coconut oil are their sources then you have a lot of nuts and oil seeds which are full of uh, carbohydrates and fats okay they are also energy yielding and last but not the least are your sugar and jaggery which are again energy yielding foods okay so what are the nutrients that they are giving now cereals and millets they provide fiber they provide calcium a little bit of iron and b complex vitamins roots and tubers they give a lot of fiber and some beta carotene or we can call them carotenoids vegetable oil ghee and butter they give fat soluble vitamins the vitamin a d e and k are the 
fat soluble vitamins which which we which we get from the vegetable oil and ghee so like there are a lot of people who say that if you want to lose weight just don't take any form of oil so what happens after a certain time the body may get devoid of the fat soluble vitamins that is with vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k so you should always have little amount of oil in your diet then what do nuts and oil seeds give they give us proteins vitamins minerals then sugar and jaggery especially jaggery it gives a little bit of iron and certain other micro minerals so we'll be doing this later on when we study each food group in detail okay next we come to the second function that is the bodybuilding function so you understand what is bodybuilding it's not going to the gym and doing a lot of exercise well there are certain nutrients that help you in building the muscles of your body the muscles of your body or they help in building the proteins of your body they help in building the proteins of your body and what are these basically they are the pulses nuts oil seeds milk and milk products and then come your non vegetarian food products which is the meat fish poultry and eggs okay so pulses nuts and oil seeds what do they do they have a lot of energy they have a lot of b vitamins and certain fibers okay and also some invisible fat they have milk and milk products have calcium you must have heard it that you should drink milk for a lot of calcium vitamin a okay and riboflavin it is all present in milk and the products which are associated with milk like the cottage cheese like paneer like a uh, chaanch like buttermilk okay so these are the milk products then we come to the meat fish and poultry as well as egg and what are they rich in they are rich in fat vitamins iron and sometimes iodine especially the sea foods are rich in iodine okay so like if you eat sea fish it has a good amount of iodine so this was the second function the third function of the foods is the protective and regulatory now remember i told you about the little defense system that the body has so this is the defense system that helps in protection of the body okay so vitamins are minerals based uh, vitamins and minerals are basically protective and regulatory in functions like the green leafy vegetables they have antioxidants they have beta carotenes they have vitamin c they have fiber which are protective they they help in improving the inside army of our body okay and some other vegetables and fruits are also protective in nature and apart from that they have fiber they have sugar and they have antioxidants okay next let us come to cereals and cereal products like i told you cereals is a good source of energy what all cereals do we have we have uh, we have wheat we have rice like we have wheat we have rice we have oats we have jowar we have bajra these are the millets okay we have ragi and many other millets are of this sort so cereals and cereal products like i said they are a rich source of energy apart from energy they are a good source of certain b vitamins and certain amino acids as well we will be doing this in detail in the next class apart from cereals we have pulses and legumes now if we talk about pulses we have a lot of pulses like we have the masoor dal okay we have the uh, chana dal or you can call it the chickpea uh, chickpea uh, uh, pulse okay apart from that we have urad dal we have moong dal and several other uh, arhar which is also known as the tuwar dal okay so we have several other pulses and legumes like we have the sprouts which can be eaten as legumes and what are the functions of these pulses and legumes they have 
they have a little amount of calories they have proteins Pro if they have proteins they have amino acids then they have fiber and certain other nutrients like the b vitamins okay so these are the pulses and legumes milk and milk products when we come on milk and meat products so like like i said milk we have also meat products like the eggs the fishes the poultry the uh, pork everything comes in the meat products so when you're having sausages when you're having salamis when you're having uh, rashes a lot of meat products are involved and these meat products are a good source of protein okay apart from protein they they are a good source of if you can understand this this is known as hemoglobin so they are a good source of iron we can say that helps increase the hemoglobin of the body they are a good source of certain other vitamins and minerals especially the fat soluble vitamins so we'll be touching upon this in detail in the next few classes okay what about milk products milk products like i said they are a good source of fat soluble vitamins which are your a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k vitamin a when it is a non vegetarian product then the vitamin a is in the form of retinol but if it is in the form of a vegetarian products then we can say that it is in the form of carotene so for meat and milk products it's or we can say animal product if we call this animal product huh animal products then we can say this is the vitamin a that we are getting is in the form of retinol okay now next we come to the vegetable and fruit products so as you know students that you've been eating a lot of vegetables in the form of curries in the form of salads and you've been eating a lot of fruits in the form of juices in the form of smoothies or raw fruits so these vegetable and food fruit products basically they give a lot of fiber in the diet as well as they give a lot of antioxidants antioxidants remember the defense system it helps in removing the bad villains in your uh, body and help they become the heroes because they have a small army they help in uh, reducing or removing the free radicals of the body which cause damage to your body okay so the vegetables and fruits are basically rich in a lot of vitamins and minerals okay the vegetables and fruits maybe i should write it here the vegetables and fruits are rich in a lot of vitamins and minerals and which vitamins and minerals basically the b complex vitamins okay so there are a lot of vitamin b complex that means b1 b2 b3 uh, uh, biotin tryptophan niacin we'll be all touching upon this in detail and apart from that it is also rich in vitamin c so vitamin b and vitamin c are the heat labile vitamins that means they get destroyed by heat so that is why when we eat these uh, vegetables and fruits in the form of salads or in the form of you know raw fruits then we get a lot of these vitamins the vitamin c and the different kind of b vitamins but if we basically if we heat these so the vitamins get destroyed or they get denatured or a little less effective than they originally are in fact when you if you've heard a lot that people say that you should you should be drinking you know hot uh, water with a lot of uh, vitamin c squeezed uh, from a from a lemon or something like that basically if you search about it vitamin c gets destroyed at above the temperature of say 35 40 degrees so if you heat water and then if you add a squeeze of lemon then it might destroy the vitamin c which is present in it okay so what do i, do I mean that these vitamins and minerals are very uh, much present in the vegetables and fruits apart from vitamins we have 
minerals like certain fruits have different kinds of minerals some have a little amount of you know uh, iron some have a little amount of potassium some have a little amount of sodium so that is different in different fruits and different vegetables apart from these these are a rich source of fiber also when they are eaten with the peel okay so when you juice the fruit what happens you strain it and you remove the fiber but when you are eating it whole then you are taking the fiber also so fiber helps in reduction of weight fiber helps helps in bring down the diabetes levels fiber helps in bringing down the cholesterol levels fiber helps in a lot of you know heart problems so it is multi beneficial so vegetable and fruit products should be basically eaten raw don't i mean like it's like you shouldn't be eating raw gourd or raw karela but you should be eating those vegetables which can be eaten raw maybe in the form of salad you should be eating them okay next we come to the fats and the sugars so fats and sugars are basically what if we talk about fats and sugars they are you know um we can say a source of energy because they are giving good amount of energy to the body one teaspoon of sugar if you talk about sugar one teaspoon of sugar gives up around um uh 5 kilo calories okay or uh, and if we talk about fat or oil then one teaspoon of fat and oil gives around 45 kilo calories so it's a good fat you can say it is a good source of energy okay so when we talk about energy when we talk about uh, calories when we talk about uh, a lot of calories then we talk about fats and sugars for a person who's you know malnourished we give him a lot of juices instead of having the fiber we give a lot of juices so that he can get a lot of uh, calories and similarly for fat also and apart from that uh, when we talk about fats we also talk about the vitamin a d e and k which is associated with the fats and sugars okay so with here apart from this we also talk about a food pyramid and how much you should be eating and what you should be eating is represented in this pyramid which you can see here okay so basically what is there in this pyramid if you can see in this pyramid it starts with a broad base which consists of cereals and cereal products okay now in this broad base where there is cereals and cereal products you see uh, chapati you see multigrain breads you see oats you see rice okay so this should be the maximum in the diet okay after that we come to vegetables and fruits following the cereals and cereal products we come to the vegetables and fruits which should be a little less than the cereals but then they are the second maximum from the uh, from the base okay then we come up to the milk and meat products so that also if you are vegetarian you should be having a lot of milk and dairy products or maybe nuts and legumes and if you are a non vegetarian then you can have a lot of meat fish eggs etc but decide that you need to cook it in a little amount of oil and then the least amount of the food that you should be having is the sugar and the fats so there is this line that goes that less sugar less fat and less salt should be there in the food so as you can see as the pyramid goes up this is the least portion okay so this least portion should make up for your sugar oil and fat in the diet okay so this is basically what the food pyramid is all about so this is basically the food pyramid which means it should start with the cereals okay then there should be the vegetables and fruits okay it it's in descending orders this is the maximum then comes the vegetables and fruits then comes your milk and meat products okay then and last or you can see the pulses and legumes 
ठीक है एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट कम्स द शुगर ऑयल एंड सॉल्ट ओके सो दिस शुड बी द लीस्ट इन द डाइट एंड दिस इज बेसिकली वॉट योर फूड पिरामिड इज सो इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग अ प्रॉपर डाइट विच हैज द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ऑल द फ्रूट्स वेजिटेबल सीरियल्स पल्सेज लेग्यूम्स इन द राइट कॉम्बिनेशन देन वॉट आर यू टेकिंग यू आर टेकिंग अ बैलेंस्ड डाइट दिस बैलेंस डाइट इज ऑल्सो गिविंग यू एनर्जी दिस बैलेंस डाइट इज ऑल्सो रिपेयरिंग योर इट्स इज गिविंग यू प्रोटीन बेसिकली for the normal repair functions and it is also helping you in the body's defense system okay in the defense of the body for fighting different diseases so this is what basically a balanced diet is made up of okay so this was the food pyramid and the food groups that we discussed in the next class we will be talking about all these different food groups in detail okay so take care and keep studying until then goodbye